If you struggle to create interesting, dynamic and varied drum grooves, then this video is for you. Today we're going to hop into Ableton and I'm going to show you my top techniques on creating interesting drum grooves. So let's waste no time and get in straight into Ableton. We can now hop in and start getting some hats on the go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a nice short hat which is going to be our main hat by the main hat i mean it's going to be the main hat that we're going to have pretty much throughout the whole track so i'm using one of my drum racks again and what i'm looking for for this main hat is something nice and short and higher in frequencies so it's going to sit more subtle in the mix so something like that is brilliant Something like that, it's taken up a lot of space. You can hear it's got quite a bit of weight and a bit of body to it. And that's not what I want for this. I just want this to be very subtle. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. And for this, I'm not adding any groove. I'm not adding any extra notes. I'm leaving this just on the off beats. So we get a standard sort of four on the floor pattern now. Following this, we're gonna add some layers to this hat, which is gonna change the sound of it and change the energy of it. And this can happen very, very quickly if you have the drum rack set up like I have here. So what we can do, duplicate this out. And let's just name stuff to keep it all nice and tidy. So we can call this main hat. And now we can move on to another one. And we can call this body hat. So now what I mean by body hat is I'm looking for something with a bit more weight to it. By weight to it, I mean it's probably got some more mid-range. It's going to sort of help that hat cut through the mix of it. And it's probably just better to demonstrate than talk so maybe something like this one and what we can do is we can just delete this one now so that's our main hat and that's our body hat now you can already see what's that done it's just again like i said add a bit of weight it's still very short sample and it's helping it just cut through the mix a bit but i just think we might be nice uh, to find something else So there, that's a much better example. And like I previously talked about with the tone with the claps, I'm doing the same with the hats. I'm making sure this one, this is our main hat, so the hats that we're sort of building the hats around. I'm making sure this one is similar in tone to this one. So they should sit really nicely together. And they almost sound like one hat playing together now. So now we can one-up this again, and we can go energy hat. So by energy hat, we're going to look for something that bit brighter in frequencies, bit brighter in sound, something that's probably more dominant in the high end, uh, maybe a bit wider as well in the stereo field. So again, I'm using this drum rack. So something like that is probably going to work really nicely. So let's listen. And why I call it energy hat is because if I turn this one off, And then bring it in just because of the tone of it just because of how dominant it is in higher frequencies and it's a brighter hat it's really just bringing some more life to that open hat so there we have just three layers straight away and you can vary this throughout your track as well you can have your main hat throughout then you can add your body hat then you can add your energy hat then you have a breakdown you can take away the energy hat then you have your drop with just a body hat. Eight bars later, you have your energy hat come in. So this is a really easy way to just add some layers to a hat, which you can then vary for your arrangement. So it may not vary in a sense in the loop, but in the arrangement, we're adding variety through our main hat. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to look at getting a bit of movement in there with some hats, and we're still looking at keeping it very simple to start with. So we're going to look at getting like an eighth note hat in, and... I like to use a very simple technique to get a nice bit of interest in an eighth note hat. So by eighth note hat, I mean both of these combined like so. So I'm just going to lower the velocity. And we're just going to find a nice sample. That one's quite nice anyway. Maybe something like that. And you can just hear how like constant that is now. Now it sounds a bit out of place, but what we're going to process it and then add some side chain, it's going to really sound nicely put together. So firstly, we're going to use a Ableton stock plugin. The 
phaser and flanger. So this is a great plugin because it's got a phaser and flanger in it and you can always double it up. Personally, I just like using the phaser or the flanger, I'm not a massive fan of the doubler. So now what we can do is we can just up the feedback so it's phasing a bit more and then just change the rate and I try and not overthink this. I just, when it sounds cool, I'll leave it in like halfway through the video, but I just wanted to advertise my brand new website, brendanjamesmusic.com. So you can head to the link in the description of this video and go there. I'm offering now one-to-one -one tuition, mix downs and masters. And in the coming few months, there will be sample packs on there and the next track from scratch series will all be on there. So please just check it out and let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you're going to use those services if you're having struggle with the website just drop me an email which is on the website or drop me a message on instagram and i will let you get back into the video so i like that because it's on a third so it's almost out of time in the grid slightly so it's just going to add a bit of extra sort of movement and make it less rigid like we're programming drums in a computer and more like we're doing it on like a drum machine or even in person or something like that we're going to leave that as it is and what i've done now is i've duplicated one across the exact same eighth note hat across and i've just panned this one off to the left so if i play it now that plays off to the left and then what we're going to do is we're going to pan this one off to the right and what we can do again to get a bit more interest is change this one to a flanger and just play with the rate just get it moving slightly differently maybe add a bit of warmth to it change the feedback so then when we play these two together really nice amount of movement there it's bouncing around quite a lot and then we can just do a bit of group processing and apply a sidechain plugin such as kickstart so kickstart works by almost volume automation by ducking it down out of the way instead of necessarily sidechain compression it's just a much quicker way of working and i prefer it so now we're just controlling that one that lands on the kick and that other one that lands on the offbeat is still poking through nicely. And then in the mix, then we can just dial this into taste. So now we're getting a bit of width within our hats and a bit of movement, but ne not necessarily any groove because everything's quite straight at the moment, but we'll get to that. So let's just call that eighth. And what we can do again, because I'm all about saving time and being efficient, we can get our 16th hat in now nice and early so a 16th hat is something that repeats on every 16th note so like so so if we do maybe something like this and then we can apply our swing to it so then if we just play this one it's very constant it's very rolling which is nice because it's going to help gel all of our hats together so what we can do to make this a bit more interesting maybe we can go Put it on a phaser. Again, just play around with the rate and amount and the feedback. There's no right or wrongs. I quite liked it on 32. It was sounding a bit weird. Let's leave it on that one. That has a bit too much weight to it. You can just play it if I play it with the rest. It's just cutting through a bit too much. So we're going to still make sure that it's sounding nice with everything else we've got going on. So maybe in the mix, this 32 note one, it's not really working. Sounds cool by itself. Well, that's cool. And you could always change this effect as well. So if you have any plugins such as for Sound Toys, Phase Mistress, you can always use that. I'm just trying to use stock Ableton for the sort of mass audience here. And then to save some time, we can use kickstart again and we can apply that to our 16th hat now and to get some movement into this one let's put a pan on it bring up the amount change with the rate maybe just bring back the dry weight on this one a little bit so it's a bit more subtle in the way it's phasing it sounds nice with that pan on it sounds like it's moving nicely so now we can just name this one 16th hat and let's group everything together with regards to our hats. So we can just listen to our hats 
by themselves. So everything's sounding very nice, very well put together because we've been careful with that sample choice selection like I've been talking about, making sure they're all similar in frequency, similar in tone. But it's a bit robotic, it's a bit stiff, there's not a lot of groove going on in there. So now we can start looking to add a bit more interest. So we can easily do that by using the same drum racks that we've been using and then we can call this one Groove Hats. And then what I like to do is I like duplicating this over two bars to start with. And I'll just deactivate the ones on the offbeat because I want to make sure they've got enough room to breathe. I don't want to make sure I'm stacking too much stuff on top of here because we're going to still layer this up with some more open hats and some top loops as we go along in this video. But how we're going to get our groove is we're going to really get our groove using either the on beat, so where the kick is, or the notes mainly either side of the offbeat. The easiest way to do this is to apply our swing and using a stop start technique. So the stop start technique is we just play it and you can see the little cursor. And when I hear that I can hear another hat come in, I'm just gonna stop it wherever it's, the marker lands. It means probably that's where I'm hearing this hat to happen. So here I could hear a little hat to come in. So maybe just try that one. And you can already hear how that's getting a bit more skip now, a bit more rhythm bit loud though so we can just dial that back with the velocity and I can already hear one sort of going up and then down and obviously we're paying attention to our tone again like I've said making sure they all sound nice together see how now if I just played this one this would stand out like a sore thumb It's just not right in the sense of the tone of a hat. Obviously, we've got our clap that lands there too as well, so we couldn't really hear it. We've got a nice little reverse one here, so maybe let's just try that there. Or maybe on going into the two bar. Yeah, that's nice. Let's just turn that one down. And you can really hear now, so we've got starting to build a little bit of rhythm. Maybe add a little double one there with this one here. Same one. We're not leaving enough room for this one, I don't think. So maybe let's just try that. And then we can look and maybe just copy some across to use that one again, maybe. Maybe try something like that. And we can use the same one again. And then we've obviously got that reverse one there. And now we can duplicate this out again to get a bit of four bar variation. So we've already got a bit of two bar with using that one and sort of a difference in velocities and stuff like that. So let's duplicate this out. And I'm going to show you a really cool technique using the 32 notes, which I don't see too many people use within their hats, but I really, really like the effect it has. And I think I can hear it going into this one, maybe. So let's try it. So what we need to do is change our grid to 32 notes. We do that by right clicking. And then we wanna make sure we're using a really short hat for this. So that one there is probably gonna work the best out of the one we've all got so far. And we can just sort of automate the volume up like so, so it sort of rises in, we can add another one, let's play it, and you can hear the effect it has, I don't think the placement's right of it, or the sample's right, but it's a really cool technique and we're going to get this to fit nicely into our groove, so let's just deactivate it, listen, and reevaluate where we can position this. So I think maybe here over the four bar, so we can just move this across maybe. So we've already got that one there with the same sample. So we can deactivate this one for the minute, turn this one on, and let's just find a new sample. Let's use that one. So 
So it's nice, but it's a bit loud. Let's bring it down. Really nice with that one. And what we can try and do is can try adding a bit of whip to it. We can either use some Stereo Savage, which is a really great plugin for stereo width. So let's put that on, put on the split feature. And then we are going to apply some side chain as well using kickstart. But we're just going to make sure that it's dialed back quite a lot because we don't want this heavily side chain. We just bring that one down a bit so it's a bit quieter. And all I'm doing when it comes to mixing is I'm just adjusting levels as I go along. I'm not going through and processing stuff and making sure it's sounding its best because this is a creative process and I don't want to get too involved in the mixing. You could always go and add another one of these groove hat groups and add a bit more to it. I don't think we need it. There's plenty going on in this one, but that's always a good technique to use to add some more interest within your hats. So now let's look at filling out with some maybe open hats and getting some really cool modulation in there on the go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open an open hat rack and we're gonna go and add our open hat. So you're thinking, well, why would you wanna add an open hat? An open hat is gonna pick up the energy even further over our closed hats, even in this more deep tech style of music that I make and a lot of people are enjoying making at the music. The hats are very short so you make sure that we are choosing a short sample or manipulating it to be nice and short and snappy which i will show you to do now so let's play it and see what hats we're vibing with sticks out a bit too much that one So for me, that one's working the best with the hats that we've already got. What we can do now is maybe duplicate this out and again, just add a bit of groove to it. So by groove, I'm going to emphasize either the ones on the kick or either side with hats. So you can almost hear one there straight away. Blast swing. Um, again, we can use techniques that we've used in before by trying to find open hats similar in tone to see if we can get a bit more interest on the go. So that one almost sounds like a pitched up version of our main hat work we've gone for. So let's try it on the end of the two bar. It's kind of cool. So a stoop came out. So I like what that's doing. And what we can just do now to make sure it's just sitting nicer in the mix is we can find which one it is. So if we go up to... So there's one either side of this one. There we go. So we can just find it on the drum rack, open up the controls, and there we have the pan. So we can easily access the pan. So we can just push this one off to the left, maybe. Sounds quite nice. Maybe just drop it down in velocity a little bit. Maybe what we can do now is find another hat and have this one off to the right after four bars. So again, this is what's gonna start creating that interest and almost dynamics in the hat. So that sounded cool. So just make sure we need to find it. So it was that one there and we had that one off to the left. So let's push the one off to the right. It's quite loud compared to all of our, so we're already creating quite, quite a lot of interest now within our hats. So another thing that I like to do is get some sort of modulated hat on there that is really gonna add a lot of movement so for this one, we're going to make sure 
but it's just on the offbeat. And we're going to find something which is a bit more subtle. So maybe something like this one. So that one, I think that one's going to be the one. And what we're going to do for to this is we could do one or two things. So we could either go into the sample itself and go to the classic and bring down the sustain. So now it's like a closed hat. But now if we start bringing up the decay, the sample starts playing out all the way. But in the track, what we could start doing So I really like what that's doing. So how we can automate that is we can then just duplicate this out maybe, go to two bars, open up our automation, and there it is. Because it's the last thing we touched within the sampler, it is already there. So let's just bring the whole thing sort of down a bit. And then we can just pick the occasional one to start bringing up. And then let's go back over here, duplicate this out. So then we can create almost more of like a rising effect at the end of a four bar. So let's just add a bit of variation, do that. And then going into the four bar, we can do something like that. Really start to drive that one up a bit. And you can really tell how that's got a lot of movement now. Now you could do this with like a 909 hat, so it's a bit more up front and you get that sort of garagey feel. You can do this with a 808 hat. You can do this with loads of different things. So we can keep that in there and we can go one step further with this. So now what we could look at is snares. So if you wanted to add snares, this is obviously completely up to you, but I would always emphasize placing your snares on the point two or the point four. That's where you add, get that swing from. That's where you get that almost shuffle from. So we're going to do it for the sake of this track. But a lot of this minimal deep tech sort of stuff that I'm making and um, stuff like Night Plan and Wheats, there's not much snares going on in there. It's pretty sort of straight with a clap and quite a lot of groove is coming from the kick. But we're going to add some anyway because I want this to video. I want you to be able to get as much as you can from this video. So we're gonna make sure that we're using a nice short snare, which is gonna sound nice with our clap. So I imagine this one's gonna work quite nicely. So let's just play it. And it's just a case of trial and error with the positioning. So that one sounds nice. Let's bring down the velocity. And let's duplicate it and maybe add another little hit in on the two bar. And in fact, I'm just going to leave it like that. Sometimes less is more. So we can delete these because they're just more racks. And now the final thing that I'm going to add is top loops. So don't be afraid to use top loops just because people deem loops as being cheating or not very creative doesn't mean that you can't use them to your advantage to really fill out your drums and add some extra life to them. As long as you're not relying on them, then definitely utilize top loops. There's a big difference if we went and found a top loop first and then added some of these techniques I just went over than doing it the way we've done it, where we've made our own drum groove and we're just adding a top loop to help bring out some more life within our drums. Is we're just gonna go down to some packs. I really like these IQ ones. Maybe let's have a look at the row minimal ones. Let's go to drums and let's go to top loops maybe. Now that groove is sitting really nicely with the drums that we've got. Samples a bit bright, a bit loud, but we can use certain techniques to get around that. So let's add an audio channel in and put him on our audio channel. Now what we're gonna do straight away is go to preserve setting, change this one to down. So now we're gonna knock down the preserves and we can either change it to 16th or just leave it on the transients. I'm just gonna leave it on the transients. And by doing this, 
we're going to hear instantly how that's really pushed down the transients. See the difference? Obviously, it's a bit loud at the minute, but that is fine because we can turn down the volume easily. Now, if you don't have access to a sidechain plugin like I've been using with uh, the Kickstart plugin, what I would recommend you to do is to go into the automation of clip and remove the claps. So you, the 1.2s and for 1.4s. So you do that by going into the clip like I've just done, drawing the claps out. And then go to the 1.3 and duplicate this all the way across the entire loop like so. But if you have the luxury of having a plugin like Kickstart, you can do this in seconds. So we can just solo this, go to Kickstart, leave it on 100, and you just want to change the chain either to classic or nice and tight. And you can see the way it's cut with the volume automation, it's completely removed that clap. So if I just brought that down, so now it's just primarily the hats we're using and some of the percussion that's coming through on it. So we can just sort of dial that to 80 and then just adjust the volume. And we're going to use the same techniques just for another loop. So now if we just listen to those together. Now some people would probably just have that as their drums, do you know what I mean? And add a clap on top of it. And you can tell the difference in the way we've done it to just using top loops as your sort of primary go-to way of adding drums to your track. That's pretty much it with my drums. I wouldn't go any further than that. Obviously there's mixing and, you know, EQing and stuff like that and balancing it and that can really help bring some life to your drums. But it's really simple techniques that I've used, but we're just getting the most out of them. And the most important thing when making your own drums, like I keep on hammering home about, is making sure that you're picking the samples that all sound similar in tone. Now, if you don't think your ear is trained enough, like I said, go and grab mix and key, run all your samples through there, problem solved but it's a really good way to practice and train in your ear by making sure that you're choosing samples that gel well with each other. Done with. And there we go. That is another video all over and done with. I hope you got some good insights from that one because I really think this one's important and especially within the minimal tech scene, it's very simple just to rely on top loops because there's so many great sample packs out there. But using the simple techniques that I just showed you can really add some life and interest to your drums. And I hope that this tutorial really showed you the emphasis that just taking a bit of time and programming and adding some modulation to your drums can really add some life to it.